Good evening. Good evening, Diego. How are you today? I'm fine. A little bit tired, but I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> and you? Me too. I'm really tired too. Do you do you work, Diego? In the platform? No. Do you work? Oh yes, <laughs> yes, but. Uh, I go to the place just in Monday and Wednesday. So Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I am in home. Oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Very fine. Viendo la platform y se me trabó. Está costando que funciona, la verdad, dicho. Bastante lenta está. Okay, vamos a esperar a que se conecte la mayoría. Okay, guys. <coughs> okay, have an activity for you. Let's see. Okay. Hello guys, how are you today? Uh, let's start with the class because the time is running, right? El tiempo. The time runs really fast, okay? El tiempo corre super rápido. So let's work. Um, y los que se vayan incorporando, pues, que empiecen a trabajar, okay? Guys, <coughs> let's write a paragraph. Okay, using different, using the different tenses you have studied, okay? Los diferentes tenses, for example, um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, verb to be, simple present, 
que es simple past. ¿Se acuerdan que vimos used to también? Um, wishes, ok. Past, eh, wishes, no, sería wishes as a present. For present, right? <clears throat> Remember about that? Okay. Do you have, let's see. From 10 to, to 15 minutes to work on it, okay? Tienen de 10 a 15 minutos para trabajar en ello, okay? Y lo vamos a leer en clase. Okay, teacher. Okay, thank you, Alejandra. If you have any doubts, okay, let me know. Y vi que estaban trabajando en la plataforma. No sé quién escribió, quiero ver. Ok, guys, solamente si no pueden participar, pues entiendo, pues. Good evening, eh, Álvaro, good evening. Estamos trabajando, ¿ok? Para los que se acaban de conectar. Álvaro también dice un problema de salud. Ok, guys, don't worry about it, ¿ok? Los que puedan trabajar.
Hello, Vladimir, tell me. I said my paragraph it was a good. No, le, no se le entiende, Vladimir. Si usted escriba, porfa. Disculpe, pero no, no se entiende bien. Yes, lo puede mandar. Sí, está bien, Álvaro. Álvaro, Vladimir. Sí, porque lo necesitaba que lo leyeran, pero no sé. Ahí le contesté también, Silvita, del ejercicio. Ok, teacher, ya voy a revisar. Ok. Y probé varias palabras y no, no me salió, no me salió. Sí, es que es diferente. Oh. <coughs> si alguien terminó, me aviso, ¿ok? Después vamos a ver el simple past versus present perfect, ¿ok? <coughs> Quiero ver.
Okay, excellent. Les voy a leer el de Álvaro, ¿por qué? ¿Y por qué se pone Álvaro? <coughs> Como el de Vladimir. Ya me desconecté, guys, sorry. <laughs> Pedro and I <coughs> have been colleagues for two years. We like to share at metal at meal times and outside for our work. We usually travel to the beach with all our colleagues. Excellent, okay? Thank you. Leí el de Vladimir porque <coughs> él tiene problemas de, de audio. <coughs> Yo terminé, teacher. Can I read? Léamelo, por favor. Ok. Today, I'm going to tell you about a little history in my life. Mm -hmm. When I had 21 years old, I was studying in the university and I also worked. Mm -hmm. One day when I was in my, in my working, a handsome and young guy come to me. Excellent. <laughs> come to my work and asked me for my cell phone number. I gave it to him, and three months later, we got married. Only that. Excellent, okay. Vaya, Silvita, es story, okay? Esta history, history que es de hecho, verdad? De hecho, histórico. Y esta story que es una historia. Entonces la suya sería story, okay? Sin, sin H. Sin H. Y con S. Story. Story. Y la otra es came to me, porque como es pasado, ¿verdad? Eh, sí, así tengo. Came to me. Ah, pues sí. Y es got, es que así se lo oí. Got, married, y la otra era solo esa, got married. Ajá, en gay, gay Ah, pues sí. And gave it to him. Ah, pues sí. Excellent, Silvita. Thank you. Ajá, Alejandra. Hi, teacher. Hi. My apologies for the noise in my house. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, when I was a little girl, I played the flute. Mm -hmm. These years in my school were wonderful. I learned too much discipline and that I helped me in my life of the adult. My school don't have too much resource, but I am happy in this year with my classmates. And now I wish I learned to play the cello sometime. I think that the life is short and it should be more funny. Excellent, guys. I like all your, 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 your stories, okay? Alejandra, Silvita, <clears throat> Vladimir. No sé si Graciela no puede. Ah, okay, <clears throat> Graciela says, my name is Graciela. I am an accountant. I was born in San Juan. Epesontes La Paz, but now I live in Soyapango. There is too much traffic, but in my neighborhood, there are many trees too, and I like it. My family and I live in a big house. We are eight people. Sometimes I wish live, I wish live in out of the town. Excellent, okay. Thank you, Graciela. Ajá, uh -huh. someone else? I finish my. Okay, thank you, Diego. Sorry. But it's based on a 
manga that I read. Uh -huh. Okay, it's about, uh, it's a manga called uh, Pum Pum. So <laughs> this is the protagonist. Uh, Pum Pum is sad when he remembers the past. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, no. Pum Pum is sad when he remembers the past. When he was a child, he was really shy but happy. He used to play with his friends until he moved to another place. He was friend of a girl who taught him how to think about the future. She was the reason why uh, Pum Pum used to wish he could become an astronaut in the future. Now, he don't know what he wants to do. He asked to, him, to himself, where my old friends are now? What did they do after I moved? Now he wishes he could to he could oh I I write this twice. Now he wishes he could talk to his old friends again. And that that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Diego. <clears throat> Let's see. Ana Maria tampoco puede hablar. Yes, I can, but. <laughs> no, para que lo lea usted, porque le, digamos los que no pueden por, por tráfico o algo. Lea okay. usted porque es lo mejor, ¿ok? Ok. Thank you. I grew up in San Salvador. When I was a child, I used to play with baby, with Barbie, sorry, and I like to watch too much television. It was my big. Bill's entertainment. I wish was a child again. Oh, yo creo que todos. Anita, <laughs> thank you. Excellent, okay? Yo les aplaudo. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> Can I say it? Marcelo, hola, hola, hola. Hello. Hola, hola. 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 No, Marcelo, I cannot hear you well. Como que, ¿sabes? Escucha como que si el volumen de su, de su, de su teléfono algo estaba en bajo. Así se oye como el fondo. ¿A mí? ¿Hello? Hola, hola. Ahora sí, ahora sí. Ah, ok. Eh... The last week I went to the office because I have to get twice a week. That's why I get up at 3 a.m. and I have to leave my house at 4.15 a.m. Fortunately, fortunately uh, how do you say? Fortunately. Uh, yeah, fortunately, I travel in my car uh, because if I travel in in bus, um, I will have to get up earlier, but it doesn't matter the time that I get up because I, I always get later. My God, uh -huh. uh, but I have a right at the office at the same time as when I get up early because there is so much traffic. I wish there weren't so much traffic or I wish I didn't have to go to the office because last year I used to work from mm -hmm. my house. Mm -hmm. Excellent, okay. Solamente Marcelo by bus, okay? Okay. By bus. Mm -hmm. Quiero ver quién escribió más en el grupo. No. Creo que está un escribió. A ver qué me cae. Uh -huh, someone else? Me, teacher. Thank you, Sophie. Okay, this is a real story. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, I'm going to my home because I'm in my mother's house. Uh, how learning to sew. My mother is a seamstress and she has a sewing workshop and she has already several customers. Last week, a friend of mine 
or there meet some pillows and they are ready done to make the delivery tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you, Sophie. Someone else? Someone else? Teacher. Hey, thank you, Dieguito. Ya la voy a revisar. Hola, Evelyn. My name is Evelyn. With family visit to San Miguel for Christmas. I like go to church on Sunday. My favorite word is pray. I live in this. I, I live in with my daughter. Daughter. Daughter? Daughter. <laughs> daughter. Only teacher. Poquito. Excellent. Thank you, Evelyn. Ok, dice Claudita, me imagino que no puede leer, este, <coughs> hablar, perdón. <coughs> Hello, my name is Claudia Sánchez. Hola, teacher. ¿Puedo ah, hablar sí un puede. poquito? Adele, un pues. Poquito. Oh, amiga. Vaya, eh, hello. Eh, my name is, is Claudia Sánchez. I'm from El Salvador. I live in, in Lourdes. My favorite color is black. I love you dancing. Eh, the weekend with my family, I go to the park. Excellent. Solo contesto un mensaje siempre de usted, ¿ok? De alguien que está pidiendo, bueno, que dice que no va a no conectarse, ¿ok? Ok. Uh, someone else, guys? No. Me, teacher. Ok, Jamie. I had a difficult week. I can sleep this night. I didn't just have breakfast at um, 6 a.m., mm -hmm. but I don't have, there is too much traffic. I used to find parking, but this week don't find. Um, but I received good night. Good news. My son got a scholarship. Excellent. Thank you, Amy. Excellent. Okay. Clap for you. Someone else, guys? Alguien más? No, creo que ya estamos, ¿verdad? Primero, espero que todos puedan ver. Vamos a ver gramática ahorita. Hi everyone, when you're in this class you'll be able to talk about the kind of food that you've eaten and the restaurants that you've visited. You'll also learn how to express past experiences. For example, you'll be able to ask and answer the following question. Have you ever eaten exotic food? Before I present the structure that we'll learn in this class, I would like for you to listen to an audio program. This audio program illustrates how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully, and I'll ask you questions about the audio program at the end. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes, 
I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Let me present the structure now. I would like to start by presenting this concept to you. The first thing is that we use the simple past for completing events at a definite time in the past. In other words, Vamos a ir parte por parte, ¿ok? You see? <clears throat> simple past. You simple past, dice, for completed events at a definite time in the past, ¿ok? Para un tiempo definido en el pasado, ¿ok? Y el otro dice, use the, the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present, ¿ok? El simple past es algo que ya, ya no más, ¿verdad? Ya dejó de ser. Mientras que el present perfect es la acción que empezó en el pasado, lo que habíamos hablado, ¿verdad? Y aún continúa o incluso no es que continúe o puede cambiar, ¿verdad? Digamos hasta la fecha no he comido, es por decir así, no he comido sushi, por ejemplo probablemente coma. A eso se refiere, ¿ok? Y ahí están los, los, los ejemplos. Let's listen to it. Things that you did and have completed. And we use the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present time. In other words, events that you started in the past and those have continued in the present and they're not complete yet. Now, what we're going to learn in today's lesson is how the two are related. First of all, I may ask you a question, such as the one that you see on the example. Have you ever eaten snails? And your answer may be, yes, I have. And when you continue to give more information about your answer, you're going to use the simple past. And you're not going to use the present perfect to continue on giving more information because typically what you want to do is you want to express an experience that you had last week about that particular question right such so as the example that we see there yes i have i tried it last month and i want you to notice the question towards the bottom it's no longer in the present perfect but it is now in the simple past and that's because we're asking questions about our uh, past experience we're no longer asking questions about uh, if you've ever eaten snails now the question is related to uh, the example that you see there i tried it last month and the next question will be related to that event and so the answer to that is yes i did and then you give more information they were delicious and so we do the same thing uh, towards the left towards, towards the right side of the example of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? We start off the question using the present perfect, and then you continue on and, and give either a positive or a negative answer. And in this case, it happens to be a negative answer. No, I haven't. Um, and then you might give more information, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night, right? Um, and then the next questions that are followed here are in the simple past. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. Okay, guys. Eh, Identifican por qué en la segunda pregunta utiliza el simple past? Alguien que me diga? Teacher, porque el verbo quiero ver. Creo que dijo, no sé si entendí bien la vez pasada que explicó de que cuando se utiliza el, el, el verbo, eh, cuando se hace una, una, una oración en negativo, se, en, en pasado se tiene que decir el verbo en, en presente. No dijo eso, o yo me equivoqué. Claro que sí lo dije, pero en este caso, la segunda, gracias, oye, y, y se lo agradezco mucho. En la segunda, este... 
oración utiliza el simple past porque, porque este responde de más, porque le dice, have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I tried them last month. Entonces ella, la misma persona le está diciendo que las probó el mes pasado. Entonces ya da la pauta para utilizar simple past, porque ya las probó, ¿sí? Es el pero, pero puedo contestar con el mismo um, tiempo en este caso. ¿Cómo sería, Mira. Marcelo? A ver. But, por ejemplo, en la primera, have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I have tried uh, snails the last month. Ajá. ¿Y cómo sería la otra, digamos? <coughs> ah, la pregunta y la otra respuesta. Ah, porque, ajá, la, la, digamos esta, la de, did you like them? Mm. Pues la pregunta sería igual, pienso. ¿Verdad? Ajá. Ajá. Igual, este, la respuesta creo que podríamos usar ambas, tanto hablando literalmente en pasado como hablando en presente perfecto. No, la respuesta va. Cuando, cuando usted pregunta en present perfect, tiene que contestar en present perfect, ¿sí? Ajá. Uh -huh. Ahí sí no, no se puede, pues tenemos que, tenemos que respetar el tense que se está utilizando en la pregunta, ¿ok? Teacher. Uh -huh. Hello, Alejandra. Podría ser, did you think about this? No. Did you think... Yeah. Ajá, sí, pero creo que no me voy a entender, va, digamos, lo que yo les quiero decir es lo siguiente, o sea, si se fija, la primera pregunta fue present perfect, yeah. y lo utilizo para saber si usted ha comido tal cosa en este caso, que son los snails, ok, have you ever eaten snails? Ah, yes I have, hasta ahí. Pero como mi respuesta fue positiva y da la pauta, o sea, ya los probó, lo, ya los ha probado. Entonces, ya puedo hacer una pregunta en pasado. ¿Te gustaron? ¿Verdad? ¿Sí me entienden ahí? Porque si les hubiera dicho no, no, hay... no I have not, no da pauta para con preguntar en pasado, ¿verdad que no? No, no a la pauta porque simplemente le pudo haber dicho, bueno, well, no, I have, I have not, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y la, tal vez le pudo haber dicho, porque no te gustan siempre en presente, ¿verdad? Porque uh -huh. no te... Cabal. En este caso, como usted está diciendo, hizo larga la respuesta uh -huh. y ya en forma pasada. Exacto, porque lo que dice Silvita es cierto, porque si ella, ella, ella dice, o él dice, no, I have not because I don't like them. Y ya la otra pregunta sería el presente. Why don't you like them? Muy bien. Excellent. Now that we understand the concept on how this topic is used, what I would like to do now is I would like to explain how to form questions using the present perfect. And um, so let me do that at this time. First of all, uh, we should learn the following concept that we're going to use have. Have it's an auxiliary verb. And we're going to use have whenever I talk about the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And then I will use has whenever I talk about the pronouns he, she, or it, or in other words, the third person, right? Um, and um, so having said this, what I would like to do now is I would like to present the structure on how to form those questions. Let me do that at this time. In order for us to form the questions, the first thing that we should include is an auxiliary have or has, as I mentioned, if we follow this rule, we learned that we're either going to use have if I talk about I, you, we, or they, and we use has whenever we talk about the third person. 
So in this case, um, we're going to use path. Um, and then this follows the subject. Then this follows the word ever. And then the verb in its past participle form. And then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever eaten snails? By the way, um, this word here is a frequency adverb. So sometimes you can remove it. Um, and um, the question will still be correct. But in this case, we want to use it. Have you ever eaten snails? Um, and what I mentioned was that you can either answer this question with a positive response, such as yes, I have, or this could be a negative response, such as no, I haven't. And so just so that we can see clearly what's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the colors at this time. All right, there we go. So have you ever eaten snails? And it's the same thing um, for our next question. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? So let's do that one as well. So I'm going to use have. This follows the subject. And then we're using the word ever. So we use the verb to be in this case, in the past participle form. And then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? And once again, the answer to that particular question can be, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And what I would like for you to notice now is how we respond to that kind of question, right? I mentioned that we can either have a positive response to that question, either yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And then this next sentence, we're typically gonna follow with a simple past statement. And the reason is because um, I'm gonna talk about my experience in the past. So in this case, I'm gonna say I tried them last month. So this statement here basically talks about that past experience that I had, which is related to this topic, right? So have you ever eaten snails? And my, my answer to that question is, yes, I have. I tried them last month, so I'm using the simple past. And um, now the next questions that you see there, which is what I mentioned earlier, are in the simple past. Did you like them? Now all the questions are related to this event that you see here, right? It's no longer this question that you're answering. You're answering the next question. I tried them last month. So you want more information about this event? from last month. Did you like it? And as you can see the answer, yes, I did. They were delicious. And we can see the same example towards the right side of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Well, the answer to that question is no, I haven't. But I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. The next question that is asked here has to do with this answer. I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Oh, did you go alone? Um, this question refers to the person going to that Thai restaurant last night. And the answer is no, I went with some friends. So as you can see, we use a combination of both the present perfect and the simple past to talk about things that you either started in the past, continue in the present. And then when you want to go into talking about a past experience, that's when we use the simple past. So let's see if we can do a couple of more questions. Um, have you ever tried sushi? How would you respond to that question? Well, typically most people have, so most people say yes, I have. And so tell me about that experience, okay? So, you're going to tell me about that experience, then that's when we're, whenever we're going to use the um, simple past. So how would you tell me about that past experience? Well, have you ever tried sushi? Yes, I have. I um, ate sushi last month. Oh, sorry. I ate sushi last month. Oh, really? And then whenever you start talking about that past experience. The next question that will follow will be in the simple past. Did you like, did you 
like it. How would you respond to that? Well, you can, you can respond to that by answering, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. I thought it was great, or I didn't like it. And the last thing that I would like for you to do is to answer the following questions. Have you ever been to a picnic at the beach? Have you ever eaten Mexican food? Have you ever visited? Okay. Contestemos esas preguntas. Let's see, Silvita, have you ever been to a picnic at a beach? Yes, teacher. Yes, I have. Excellent, Silvita. Let's see. Alejandra, have you ever eaten Mexican food? Yes, I have. Excellent, thank you. Let's see, Marcelo, have you ever visited Europe? No, I haven't. Excellent. Diego, have you ever eaten exotic food? Mm, no, I haven't, but I really want to try it. Okay, excellent, okay. Y ahí ya le puedo cambiar, ¿verdad? Okay. El tense, o la respuesta de él. Have you ever eaten exotic food? Um, as you answer these questions, what I'm Hola, like... Silvita. Hola. Yo estoy con la, con la duda, teacher, porque sí, yo creo que aquí ya estaba ocupando también verbos en, en participio. Sí, Entonces, sí, Silvita. Todo simple. La estructura es que va. El tema es simple past versus present perfect. Dentro de la estructura de present perfect está el subject, have or has, plus verb in past participle. Ahí es donde se confunde usted. Plus complement. Así se llama, por decir así, el tiempo en el que se debe encontrar el verbo. ¿Ok? Porque hace la combinación quizás de las dos, ¿verdad? Exacto. No, o sea, no es que haga, no, no, esa es la estructura del, del present perfect siempre. O sea, lo que quiere demostrar él es lo siguiente. Así de sencillo. El simple past lo utilizamos para una acción que ya tuvo su tiempo, que ya no más. Por ejemplo, I went to the supermarket yesterday, ¿ok? Es una acción que ya murió. La hice ayer, fui al mercado al supermercado y hasta ahí. Mientras que el present perfect es una acción del pasado que aún sigue con, en, 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 en continuación en el presente. For example, um, I, have, I have eaten pupusas on Saturdays. Por ejemplo, yo he comido pupusas los sábados. Probablemente sea... Imagínense un ejemplo. Eh, estoy engordando mucho, entonces ya no voy a comer pupusa, ¿verdad? Es una acción que probablemente mañana o en el futuro ya no la voy a hacer. ¿Sí? Pero empezó en el pasado y aún continúa, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, lo de los que dice, ¿Have you ever eaten snails? Hasta el momento. Y si hubiese sido la respuesta, no. No, ¿verdad? O sea, hasta el momento no los ha probado, pero probablemente los va a probar. A eso se refiere el present perfect, ¿ok? Una acción que, que es parte del pasado, pero que aún no se cierra, por decir así. O sea, no ha muerto. No como el pasado, pues que ya, o sea, muere la acción hasta ahí, ¿verdad? Ya es cuestión de... Es como, como va, así, se lo voy a poner en términos sentimentales. Con su ex ya murió, ya es tú. Y con su pareja actual es una relación del pasado que aún continúa. ¿Así? Eso es la diferencia entre ambos. Y la estructura, simple past, eh, subject, eh, verb in past, complement. Present perfect, subject, have or has, Bird eh, in past participle and complement. Okay. 
en el caso este porque alguna vez, o sea, porque le, le, el ever se lo agrega, ¿verdad? Have you ever been in a picnic at the beach? Ok. Do you have any question, guys? Quiero ver quién escribe. Ah, no. Okay, any question? Any question? No, teacher. No, ¿verdad? Entonces lo que quiero es lo siguiente, ¿ok? En el mismo, en el mismo chat, en este, quiero que escriban dos y dos, ¿ok? Dos oraciones y dos oraciones, ¿ok? Dos oraciones, de una, dos en pasado y dos en yes. presente. Pre two present. simple past and two simple uh, and two uh, present perfect, ¿ok? Ok. Ok. Thank you, guys.
¿Qué pasó? Escucho todo silencio. Claudita, están trabajando. Oraciones, tú in past y dos present perfect, ¿ok? I was sick. He was intelligent. Excellent, ¿ok? Uh -huh. No, Marcelo. La segunda no. <clears throat> ok, porque ya le está poniendo this morning. Y ya this morning es para una acción que murió, ¿verdad? Entonces puede ponerle I have play, solamente que le ponga I have been play. Ok. He estado jugando, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Okay. Que probablemente la mañana no ha terminado. Ahí sí, ¿ok? Bye. Vamos a ver, Bye. Silvita, I live in San Jacinto when I was a child. Uh -huh. Ay, no, es que ando aquí en el... En el... Ay, Claudita. Ay, hey, pupusas... No, Carlito. Okay. I ate pupusas yesterday, sería. Vamos a ver. I visited my grandfather on last, last weekend. Quitemos León, ¿ok? I have listened a Brilavín. Uh -huh. Excellent, sí, excelente, ¿ok? I ate Mexican food the last night. Solo last night, ¿ok? Alejandra, solo last night. Quitémosle de. Ok. Igual en la segunda. I have been eating Japanese food. Muy bien. Yo estaba excelente, ¿ok? I went to the beach last weekend. Silvita, I watched TV with my excellent. I have been in Europe five years ago. No. Okay. Five years ago, no. Al menos que le hubiese puesto, yo he estado, I have been in Europe for five years. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Que ha estado, okay? Y aún sigue viviendo allá. Porque si no, si es George Segó, tuvo que haber sido I had been, ¿verdad? En pasado, ¿cierto? Mm, sería nada más I lived. Uh -huh. no, Or sí. I traveled. Pero pasado, ¿ok? No, en pasado entonces no cuenta como had. En lugar de have, como la, la, el complemento es en pasado, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Para yo, tendría que haber sido had entonces en pasado. Estuve en Europa hace cinco años. No, ahí quizás no, porque ese have been he estado, sí, ¿verdad? Pero por lo general... El have been es para presente. Puede ser I was. I was in Europe five years ago. Estuve, ahí sí. Ese es el que utilizaríamos. Pero como, como yo que quería hacer las dos oraciones en el presente perfecto. Ajá. Sí, ahí. pero... Le puso five years ago y esa ya la hace pasado. Ajá, ok. Entonces, Entonces Silvita, ahí tendría que ser, si la hace en present perfect, sería, tendría que ser, I have been in Europe for five years, for. Ah, okay. Es por, ajá, pero si le deja, ahí entonces podría ser en pasado, I was in Europe, Europe five years ago, ahí sí. Uh -huh. Ah, ok. She has been in cinema, okay? I broke my leg three years ago. She had a headache yesterday. Uh -huh. Solo headache, okay? Quitémosle a Vladimir. Okay, excellent. I lost my passport. 
I never tried sushi in my life. Mm -hmm. I went to the park in San Salvador. I ate pizza in the restaurant. I have studied English since I was in the high school. See, I wrote the song to you. He went to my house yesterday. He has been in the USA. Uh -huh. I have been working for three consecutive days. Okay. Yes, for you. It's better, Diego. I have worked at this job since last year. I ate Subway in the lunch. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Excellent, okay. Piche, una, una pregunta en, en ah. esta, por ejemplo, ¿sí? realmente me, eh, no me queda totalmente claro lo, lo del presente perfecto, pero no se preocupe, yo voy a seguir investigando. <risa> Quiero decir, por ejemplo, eh, la que le puse igual, yo le incluí pasado. Yo quería hacerla con presente perfecto. Ella ha estado en el cine. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo puedo hacer esa oración como presente perfecto? Va. Y si le ponemos, she has, quiero ver dónde está, she has been in cinema for two hours. Ha estado en el cine por dos horas. Sigue sin salir. Va, imagínese Silvita, va. <coughs> Le dice su familiar, cualquiera. Este, voy a ir a ver una película, pero cuando termine vamos a comer. Y viene usted y, y llega. Y dice, va, es una mujer, va. Eh, she has, la que dice ahí, va. She has been in cinema for two hours. ¿Ok? Sigue esperando a su amiga porque está ahí adentro. Ha estado, ¿sí? No ha salido. Uh -huh. Cuando ella salga del cine, ya ahí sí va a ser went o was. ¿Qué podemos decir? Eh, she went to the cinema, she went to cinema o she was in cinema, ¿ok? Uh -huh. Ella sigue estando en el, en, el, en, el, en el cine y lleva dos horas ahí adentro, ¿ok? Ok, teacher. Okay. Okay. Sí, solo que en ese caso para ocupar más verbos, sí, eh, otro tipo de verbos que no sea el estar, ¿verdad? Tengo que aprendérmelos todos en el participio pasado. Va porque, por ejemplo, <coughs> hay unos que son los regulares, que esos siguen siendo igual que en el pasado, simple, ¿sí? Ajá. Por ejemplo, watch está played, son iguales, ¿sí? Entonces, para no confundirse y practicar, empiece con los regulares. Ah, ok. ¿Le parece? Sí, me parece. Ajá, no se compliquen. Vale. Lo, empiece con los regulares, son iguales. Played, watched, todos esos. Studied, ¿sí? Ajá. Y, y ya después ejemplo. se va aprendiendo los otros. Perdón, Silvita. Guay, ¿cuál sería? El de, no lo escuché. El, pasado, el de escribir el pasado participio, ¿cuál sería? ¿Una oración con eso, por ejemplo? Se le cortó, Silvita, otra vez, porfa, perdón. Ahorita. Hola. No, se le corta. Ah. En todo lo que escribe, le, le veo las demás. No me escucha, ¿verdad? No, no. Ahorita, okay. a su señal le aparece ahí que tiene, se le pone amarillo. Qué raro. Ahorita sí, ahorita sí Ajá. me escucha. Bueno, sí. Por ejemplo, yo decía con el verbo write, el pasado creo que es written, ¿cierto? Es wrote, en written es el participio. 
una oración, por ejemplo, con esa que incluya el written? El que puso la compañera aquí, mire. Uh -huh. I have written a romantic Alejandra, fue pues, cabal. Uh -huh. Porque lo sigue trabajando, o sea, lo sigue escribiendo. Por ejemplo, Silvita, I have written an essay. He estado escribiendo un ensayo, ¿sí? Ok, ahí ya no se tiene que auxiliar del BIM. No, porque acuérdese que el BIM es el de cero estar. Por eso es que se utiliza. Ok. Uh -huh. O sea que, digamos, el, el past participle de, de y cenar es BIM. Mm. Por eso. Ok. 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 <risa> Gracias. Y sí se utiliza, pero ya ese ya es otra cosa porque hay que poner en ING el verbo. Pero ahí ya no, se, no nos metamos, ¿ok? Ese es otro tema. <risa> Gracias. Para servirle, va. Vamos a ver. I have listened rock. Woo. I eat pupusas. ¿Qué dice? In Inolocuilta. Sería I ate pupusas, ¿ok? Uh -huh. Excellent, guys. Ok, guys. See you on Monday. Ya no, pasamos. Ok, see you on Monday, guys. If you have any question, ok, on Monday. Don't worry about it, ok? Ok, teacher. Bye-bye. Have a great teacher. Bye. Bye. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome.